Greetings, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Seven Days to Die Alpha 21 XML modding tutorial series. In the last episode, we talked about how to set up your modding environment, and I showed you where you could download both Notepad++ and a template modlet to go ahead and use to get yourself started. I also showed you how to check whether your modlet loaded properly and how to modify the modinfo.xml. We also went through a bit of basic XML and XPath so you guys could get an idea of what XML was like and how to write basic XPaths to traverse through an XML document. So if you haven't seen episode one and you have no idea what I just mentioned or have no idea about how to set up a modeler, I definitely recommend going back and checking out the first episode before moving to this one. In this episode, we're going to talk about adding and removing recipes from the crafting menu, because one of the easiest things to do with seven days modding is making new recipes for craftable things that can't be crafted yet, or just removing recipes that you don't want it in the game. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do though is go ahead and open up our file explorer and we're going to navigate back to our seven days to die folder. Now remember, if you have a shortcut on your desktop, then you can just go to your desktop and then click on the seven days to die shortcut just to get right back to where I am now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where you can find the vanilla XML files and for now we're going to make some changes directly to the file but after we've done that we're going to go ahead and then check the modlet so that we can go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to go ahead and do is go into your data file and then you can find all of the XMLs in this one here in the config file. So we're going to go into here and you can see there's lots of different XML files here. Now what we're looking for is near the bottom you should find this guy right here which which is recipes.xml and I'm going to go ahead and open this up fully and as you can see this is an xml file that pretty much contains all of the recipes that are in the game. These first ones right here are scrappable recipes so this is to add new scrapping stuff we can just essentially ignore these right now we're going to go ahead and move through here. These ones here are for exiting recipes from a forge so you turn your units back into regular stuff. Um, again we can ignore these ones and these are all for like gun parts and stuff like that we don't have to worry about those for now. We're actually going to go ahead and move down to some of these other recipes so we can get an idea of what they look like. I'm also going to go ahead and head out of here and we're we're also going to open our recipes in our modlet file as well. So if you go into mods, so come back to your seven days folder and go into mods. And you remember we set up this one called my first modlet. You may have called it something else. So whatever you called it and then go into config. And in this config, you should also see a recipes.xml as well. I've given you a lot of different XMLs kind of already pre-configured. But if we open up this one, we should go ahead and see that we've got just a bare XML file. And this is where we're going to go ahead and make our changes but before we do that I'm going to show you how you would do it in by directly altering the vanilla one and then we'll talk about how we do it through our modeler. Now that we've got both of our recipes files up the vanilla one and then the one that we want to apply our changes with we're going to go ahead and see about what recipes look like in order to get an idea about how they work and then we can go ahead and try adding our own. First of all, we're going to add it to the vanilla file directly so you can see what it does in game. And then we're going to talk about how we would add that to our modlet file. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and find a simple recipe. And the easiest one I can think of is the splint. So what we're going to do is if you press Control F, you should get a window here that says find. Now in here, essentially you just type in splint. It doesn't matter if it's capitalized as long as you've got ahead, gone ahead and unticked match case. You also want to tick wrap around so that when you do a lot of finds and operations and stuff like that, if you end up at the bottom of the document, it'll then wrap all the way back to the top and search again, just in case you want to, you know, traverse right back to the start. Always recommend having this one ticked. For search mode, just have it as normal and this will make sure that you can find things pretty easily. So we're going to go ahead and click find next right here. And as you can see, we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and move this all the way up here. So it's out of the way. And you can see now that we've gone ahead and we found our recipe here. So the recipe is a pretty simple format. As you can see, it says it has a name. And as you can see, it's got that. So the name of the recipe here is the thing that we're going to craft, right? So this is what's going to be the output of our crafting operation. So this says this recipe is to craft a splint. Now you've also probably seen that it's called not just a splint in the XML, it's called medical splint. Now a lot of items are named like this, but we will talk about how you can find those items in just a little bit. But we can also see that the recipe also has this property here, a count attribute with a value of one. So essentially this says this recipe is to craft a splint 
and it's going to give us one splint when we've gone ahead and crafted it. Now you can also see that inside this recipe, like one level down between the opening and closing recipe tags, we also have ingredients. If you guys saw episode one, this will look very similar to what you've seen already. So the ingredients also have a name. So this one says this ingredient's name is uh, resource cloth, which is just those, those scrap cloth fragments you can get. And it also says a count of 10. So essentially it says this recipe, one of the ingredients, the first one is cloth and you need 10 of it. Then it's got a second ingredient right here and it says this one is wood and it needs two so you need 10 cloth and two wood and the last one it's got resource duct tape and you can see this needs one so in order to craft a splint we need 10 cloth two wood and one duct tape this is going to go ahead and give us one of these splints so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and uh, i'm going to go ahead and just copy this recipe real quick um and i'm going to go ahead and put this into our XML here. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna put this into a comment. Now this isn't actually gonna make anything happen. We're just gonna go ahead and write a comment here so we can uh, talk about recipe formatting and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna have uh, this and we're gonna call it recipe format. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open another comment right here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and paste our recipe in here. Essentially, I'm just gonna leave this at the top like this as a reference like this. So we can go ahead and then make a little bit of notes about what these things do. This is not gonna actually add anything into our modelet. Remember, comments are just for us to read so we can go ahead and see what they're all about, right? So we can kind of comment on our code and then we can say, well, this is what this does and this is how it works. So this is the basic format for a recipe. And we're just gonna make a few more notes in a, we're just gonna extend this comment and we're gonna make some notes here. So we're going to say uh, recipe name uh, that's going to be the name of the thing to craft and then we got recipe count and that's how many of that thing we get from the crafting and then you've also got the ingredient names so ingredient name you have and that's just the name or yeah the name of one of the ingredients and then ingredient count. And that's essentially how many of that ingredient we need. Now there is more stuff and I'm going to go ahead and probably show you a bit more of that in the future. But at its core, that's the basic recipe format. And that's what we can do to go ahead and add our new ones. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to actually add a new recipe. Let's go first of all and see what currently things aren't craftable in seven days. Well, one of them, I think, is electrical parts, right? Electrical parts aren't a craftable recipe. So how are we going to actually add that into here? Well, first of all, we need to find out what electrical parts are called in the XML. How are we going to do that? Well, what we could do is we could just type in, uh, we could use our find thing here and maybe just type in electric and see what we find so you can see we got uh there we go it looks like it could be this one here resource electric parts right so this is the name for electrical parts so why don't we go ahead and just copy this and we're going to put this into our recipes file just in our uh, in our notes here so how do we go ahead and make an electrical parts recipe well we can go ahead and essentially make a new recipe right at the bottom of this xml so we're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom I'm going to go right down here and you can see that there's uh, all these recipes and then there's this closing recipes tag here. So essentially all we need to do to add a new recipe is we need to just go ahead and add new recipes right here, right? So anything below, uh, anything below here are the recipes that we can add. So what we can do is we can go ahead and maybe just copy the format of this recipe and then just change the ingredients around as well, as well. And then we can see what we can do. So let's go ahead and put this in here that we copied before. So this is the splint one. But remember, the electrical parts were called resource electric parts. So I'm going to cut that from here. And then we're going to go ahead and paste it into here. So now it's saying that we can make electrical parts and currently we'll get one of them. But you can see the, the ingredients don't really make that much sense. You can see that, you know, cloth and wood, it doesn't really look like it would make that much sense to use in electrical parts. So why don't we go ahead and change that over a little bit to see if we can get something better? Well, how about if we try and look for something like iron or something like that? So what do we what do we want to get? Maybe forged iron would be used. So let's go ahead 
and type in forged maybe and see what we get and you can see that there is actually a reference right here standardized order for mod ingredients you can see there's actually uh, scrap iron forged iron forged steel uh, you can see there's glue duct tape there's oil as well so there's actually quite a few things right here that we could use so let's go ahead and say maybe it's going to require some forged iron so we'll go ahead and grab that one and as you can see this is actually um, this is actually very close to the bottom here which is good so we can maybe change this resource cloth to resource forged iron right that and maybe that will require we can just change the amount maybe it will require just probably two forged iron for one of these let's also go ahead and use probably acid because you use acid for etching into uh, into plastics right so maybe it could be acid and plastic we'd use so you can see that resource acid is right there so maybe we could just go ahead and replace wood with acid like this and then we can go ahead and put that to maybe just one because, you know, bottles of acid are kind of rare. And then we also have scrap polymers, right? Because, you know, plastic is usually, cir circuit boards are usually on like some kind of like polymer sheet, which is then etched. So that would make sense as well. So the forged iron could like serve as like the solder and the circuit boards. Uh, or maybe maybe lead could be, uh, could be something as well. So maybe like some lead or something could be something we could consider. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave it like this. And maybe it will require two scrap polymers as well. So what we're saying now is that this recipe is going to be it's going to need two forged iron two scrap polymers and an acid we should probably put the acid at the bottom so if you go ahead and uh, put your cursor at the end of this row then hold down control and shift and then press the up arrow you can see that in notepad i can just swap the order of the recipes because the order that you put the ingredients here will actually reflect how it shows up in game now, in order to test this actually works in game, let's go ahead and save this. So we're going to press Control and S, and we're going to save this, and then we're going to move to Steam. Then we're just going to go ahead and open Seven Days and make sure that everything's running. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to open up Seven Days here, and then this should go ahead and open it up in our new game window. And then we can go ahead and make sure that this recipe got added. So this time we don't have to check our model that's loaded or anything because we've actually made a change directly to the vanilla XML file. However, in the next example, we're actually going to go ahead and do this through a mod. So first of all, we're going to go and start a new game. And I recommend uh, just calling this... Um Call it test world or something like that for your mod test and load it in Navas game. Now the what the reason you want to do this is because if you like make random gen maps every time, it's going to cause random issues. Now while the map is while the map is loading, we're also going to go ahead and press F1 as well. Now this is going to open the console and it's going to load the game data here, but we should hopefully be able to get a bit of a console readout as well to make sure everything is formatted correctly. What you're looking for is yellow and red text. Now you will get some by default th to do with like caching and things like that but as long as when you're seeing the xml's loading here you don't see any yellow text or red text come up here you know that you've done everything correctly so you'll see that it's loading all the xml's here so it's loading entity groups it's loading loading vehicles it's loading things so you, we want to look for where it's loading the recipes which i think is probably a little bit higher up here and as long as we don't see any yellow text around here everything should be fine and so far everything seems fine and now we've gone ahead and spawned into our world here there we go very good so we've spawned in the world here we're going to go ahead and remove all these basic quests at first and then we're going to go and see if our electrical parts recipe has been added so let's go ahead and type in electrical parts and look as you can see there it is right there so you can see now that if i get some forged iron scrap polymers and a bottle of acid and there's the amounts that we added as well you can see then it's going to actually go ahead and craft me one of these which is really cool so that's how you can add a recipe into the game by altering the vanilla files directly so we're going to exit out of here but we're going to talk about a few caveats with that and why we're actually using modlets instead so let's go ahead and move on now that we're back in our xml files let's go ahead and discuss why we don't want to do it like this and why we want to use modlets essentially whenever seven days has an update every single vanilla xml file gets refreshed when you download the latest update also, when you go ahead and clear your game data, or if you go ahead and verify the integrity of your game files, all of these recipes that you write or any other changes that you do in these XML files will get overwritten. It also means that, for example, when Alpha 22 or a future version of Alpha 21 comes out, everything you've done is just going to get deleted and you're going to lose everything that you've worked on, which of course, is not very good, right? We don't want that to happen. And this is where the power of modlets come in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, uh, copy this file right here. 
and I will demonstrate what's going to happen. We're going to copy this recipe and all we're going to do for now is this comment that we made here. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there and we're just going to leave it there for now and we're going to save our recipes right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back into Steam and like we did before, I'm going to go ahead and go to properties and then we're going to go here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to verify the games files. So we're actually going to go ahead and verify the integrity of the game files. And we're literally just going to go ahead and let that run. And you'll see exactly what happens in just a sec. So let's go ahead and come back into here. And you'll see now it says this file has been uh, doesn't exist anymore. Keep the file in the editor. Now we're going to go ahead and say no, and it's going to close it down. And now we're going to go back into our vanilla recipes file. So we're going to go back into seven days to die right here. Remember, you can get it from your desktop as well if you've lost it at all. Go back into data and then go back into config. And now we're going to go into recipes here. So we're going to go into we're going to go ahead and find it. If I can uh, if I can see where it is, it looks like uh, it looks like that file for whatever reason has been uh, temporarily removed. So it's probably going to have to wait to redownload it. So yeah, if it if it doesn't see any uh, any mixing different ones, it will redownload it. And there you go. You can see it's just done it right here. So the data, of course, has been updated as well. So we're going to redownload it now. And let's go to the bottom of that file. So we're going to go right to the bottom where we were before. And as you can see, everything we just did is gone. And essentially, that's what's going to happen on every single game update or any time you need to verify your files. It's all going to go ahead and disappear, which, of course, is not good. So how do we use modlets to get around that? Well, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and just assert, essentially let's review what we just did in that recipes file. All we did is we went inside this recipes tag here. So we went between the opening and closing recipes tag. We went to the end of it and then we added it like that, right? That's what we did to add our new recipe. And what we can do, essentially, this, this is called appending. This is essentially where we append to the end of a tag inside it. And there's actually a command that we can use to do that in our modlet. So what we're going to do is we're going to come outside of this comment and we're going to go ahead and say, uh, we're going to make a new comment and we're going to say how to add a new recipe. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, as as I said, that this is called appending, right? So we're going to actually put in brackets here, uh, append. And I'm just going to put it like that. So the way we do this, essentially, is we want to go ahead and we're going to open an angle bracket like this. And we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and type append like this. And then we're going to close our angle bracket just like this. Now you'll see that it's made an opening and a closing tag like this. OK, so the thing we want to append to our XML file is that recipe that we just made. Right. So this one here is what we want to append. So we're going to go ahead and cut this thing from here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it right here. Now, this is the thing we want to append, but there is a problem. If we just try and leave it like this, it's going to go ahead and it's going to say, well, we don't know where in the recipes file that we want to append it to. So this is where we go ahead and use an X path to go ahead and point it to where it goes and adds it to. So what we need to do is in this append tag here, we need to make an attribute with the name of X path. And then the value of that attribute between these two things here is going to be the X path that we need to use. So essentially what we need to do is we need to instruct the pointer to find the recipes tag. Now, in the recipes XML, remember we talked about the root of a document. You can see that the root of this is the one that contains everything else inside it. So the root tag is this recipes tag. So all we need to do for this is we need to go back into here and the X path. Remember, we have to use a forward slash to start from the root of the document. And then we want to append it inside the recipes tag like this. So we're just going to type forward slash recipes just like this. Now, essentially, what this is going to do is the pointer essentially is going to go into this recipes file. It's going to look at all these tags. Now, the first one here, XML is actually ignored. It just tells you what the formatting of the document is. But the root tag, it's going to go start from the root of the document, which is up here. Then it's going to find recipes like this and it goes, ah, here's the recipes tag. And then what the append thing is going to do is it's going to go ahead and move the pointer right to the end of that recipes tag. And it's essentially going to put it right here. So the pointer is going to start working right here. So this essentially is then going to add anything we've specified right here to the end of that recipes thing right here. 
So if we go ahead and save this now, which I'm going to go ahead and do, we're going to go and save this here. Let's go back and we're actually going to undo any changes to this thing. So just hold down Control Z and it'll undo all the changes. You should know when it's done, when this pencil disappears. So now essentially this file has been unchanged, right? However, this time we've gone ahead and added this new thing into our modeler. So to add a new recipe, you just go append, then you type in your XPath attribute and you go equals. And then all you need to do is type forward slash recipes. Then between the opening and the closing of pen tags, you put down any recipes that you want to add. Now, you don't have to just do one recipe. You can add as many recipes on the end like that. So for example, if we had another recipe, we could just go ahead and start typing, you know, recipe dot dot dot. And we could go ahead and just do the next one and the next one. And you can add as many as you want just by having this. So let's go ahead and save this file. And now we'll go ahead and head back into seven days. I'm going to close this down here. And let's go ahead and reopen seven days one more time. And let's go and see if that recipe is still there. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. Let seven days go ahead and load itself again. And then, first of all, this time, we want to make sure that our modeler has loaded. So remember, we're going to go ahead and press F1. And we're going to make sure that our mod has loaded. And as you can see, it says trying to load from folder, my first modeler, loading, for, loading mod, my first modeler. So as long as there's no yellow text here, you know that that's all done successfully. Now we're going to go ahead and go into a new game right here. And then we're going to go ahead and actually, I guess this time we can continue that Navis game thing that we uh, worked from before. So we'll go ahead and do that one. And let's go ahead and do that. So this is the one we just set up here. And I believe, at least I think that's the one we set up. Yeah, test world, that's the one. For some reason, it has a random gen region. Now we're going to keep the F1 window open. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we don't see any yellow or red text here. Now, usually, if you see yellow text, it just means that you have an incorrect X path and you have to fix it. If you see red text, it usually indicates there's actually a problem with the XML itself that you need to go ahead and alter. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of what will happen if the X path is incorrect. But for now, as you can see, it's all white text right here. So as you can see, everything is looking great and the mod seems to be loading just fine. And there's a bit of yellow text there, but if we have a look at that one, it says uh, that's something to do with the animator, which has nothing to do with what we're working on. So everything seems like it's fine. So now if we go ahead into our recipes here and just type in, uh, if I can spell it, electrical parts, you can see now that these electrical parts are still here, yet the vanilla file has been unchanged. So essentially what happens now is when the game loads, essentially what the game does is it pulls up the vanilla XML file and then applies your changes to it in real time. And then it makes an output version of that that then is loaded with the game. And there is actually a way to go ahead and find that output. So if we go ahead and exit out of the game, let's go and talk about where you can check what your X path has done, because that's another very important thing that you can use to diagnose any issues. Now that we've checked that our modeler has actually loaded the recipe, let's go and see where we can see what changes were applied to the vanilla XML file by checking the config dump that gets posted every time you load your world. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to open a new file explorer window. As you can see, mine is on my desktop. What you want to do is go into your main drive C or wherever your, uh, wherever your main user info happens to be stored. And we're going to go into users and then whatever your username is right here. Now what we're going to do is you want to make sure that hidden files are enabled. So in order to do that, I believe you just need to go into view and then you should see a tick box somewhere on the right here, right here. And you can see that it's got hidden items. You want to make sure that is enabled. Once you've enabled it, you should see this folder here called app data. Now, if you don't have hidden items enabled, this will actually not show up. So make sure you got that enabled. I'm going to go into this one here, then go into roaming and then go into seven days to die. After you're there, you'll see that there's this one here called saves. And we're going to go into this one. And actually, a good idea would be to actually make yourself another shortcut to this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go here. And I think we can go ahead and right click here and then come down here and then go create shortcut. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut the shortcut. So highlight it and you can right click or cut or just press control X to do it. And then we're going to go back onto our desktop here and we're going to go ahead and just paste it here. Now you can see you got a thing called saves shortcut. I'm actually going to rename this so it appears similarly. We're going to call this seven days to die saves, uh, seven days to die dash saves. That way 
we can go ahead and keep them together if we go back into the desktop. So now you'll see that they're kind of together like that, which will make it easier to traverse through File Explorer. Then we're going to go ahead and click into here and you can see now that this is all of your save files. Now the way the save files work is they will tell you what the name of the world is and then what the name you called your save file was. So essentially because we made one in Navas game, we're going to go into this one here, Navas game. And then you can see because I called it test world, we're going to go into this one right here. Now what you're looking for is a file called configs dump. Now this thing essentially is a copy of the config files after all of your XMLs have been applied to it through all the modelets that you've loaded. So let's go ahead and find recipes here. So we're gonna go down a little bit till we find it and it's gonna be right there and we're gonna open this one. Now what we're gonna do is the append tag that we used should have gone ahead and added this to the very bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll this down. You can see that the recipes are kind of a bit more condensed and all the comments have been removed. But if we go right to the bottom here, um, you should see now um you can see now here we go you can see that this element has been appended by my first modlet so this is the thing that we appended right here so it will tell you what modlet appended it and you can see that that's what the append tag just did so we told it to append to the end of this recipes thing and it did it went ahead and just added that recipe directly into there and as you can see everything pretty much looks exactly how we had it before so it's great because it will tell you like what modlet has appended it and you can then see uh, you can then see like wh what the uh, thing was called. So as we use the append tag, you can say, you know, element was appended right there. So that's how you can check what your modeler has done. And every time you load the Navasgain world, it will go ahead and regenerate this file so that then you can check for other things. So why don't we go ahead and start adding another recipe? We added one for mechanical parts. So why don't, or sorry, for electrical parts. So why don't we do one for mechanical parts? Because, you know, those things can't be crafted either. So let's go ahead and do one for that. So first of all, let's just type in maybe just mechanic and we'll see if that comes and shows. As you can see, it's called resource mechanical parts, right? So we can go ahead and copy this one here and we're going to go ahead into recipes. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it up into this comment thing right here. So we're going to go ahead and do like this. So we got resource mechanical parts and let's see what things we would need to maybe craft these. I'd say probably steel would be one of them. So we did find forged steel down here. So we got resource forged steel. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. Um, so that can be one of the ingredients. And let's say maybe brass would be another one. Might seem a little bit weird, but we could say gr we could say brass or maybe duct tape. Uh, grass? <laughs> grass for mechanical parts? No. We say maybe brass could be one and maybe duct tape. So why don't we get some duct tape here? Um, that would make sense maybe because, you know, it's kind of like the apocalypse. You're just like scrapping stuff together. Um, maybe oil would go into it as well because, you know, oil to kind of grease the mechanics and stuff. So maybe we'll have some oil. So we got resource oil. But what about the brass? I don't see that down here. So why don't we just type in brass and see what comes up here we go so we'll just type in brass here and uh, as you can see um one of these things uh if we can type it in here let's see if it comes up with anything we'll keep pressing enter till we get something and um, you can see there's a lot of this tt scrap metal brass stuff but that's not what we're looking for we're looking for resource brass right or something like that so let's see if we can maybe find that one so we'll keep going down here because it's all the scrapping stuff um that's units of brass. It's not quite that one. Um, so where is the uh, where is the scrap brass? I have no idea. Uh, why don't we type in scrap brass instead? And let's see if that comes up. Um, so scrap brass, maybe? Maybe that will pull it up. There we go. There's one here. Recipe name for resource scrap brass. And that'll be the one that we put the brass in the forge to get out, right? But that's actually something that we can just use straight away. So let's go ahead and use that one. And we're going to go ahead and put that also down here as well, just like this. So to add a new recipe, we can do it one of two ways. We can make a whole new append tag to do it, or we can just add to this one and add it below it. But let's go ahead and make a new append tag because I'll show you um, a couple of ways you can do it. So first of all, we'll just do another append tag. So remember, we're going to start our append tag and then we're going to close it. And then to add a new recipe, we have to tell it where to append it, right? So we need to put an XPath attribute here. And then the value of that, well, we just want it to append it to the end of the recipes file, right? So we're going to go ahead and go slash recipes like this. And then in here is where we go ahead and do our recipe. Now, this time we're actually going to go ahead and type it out manually just so you can get an idea. Now, you can just copy paste, but this time I kind of want to do it manually just so we can kind of go through it. So first of all, we need an opening and closing recipe tag. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then between these is where the ingredients go. Now the recipe needs a name. Every recipe needs a name. And this is going to be 
um, the mechanical parts, right? So we're going to go ahead and grab this and just cut it. And then we're going to go ahead and put it right over here. And then remember to close the quotes. And then we need to tell it how many it's going to make. And that is done by the count, right? So we're going to go count. And then between these two, we just put a number to say how many. Let's just say this just makes one as it did before. Now, under here, we're going to tab in one. And this is where we start doing our ingredients, right? So we're going to open an ingredient one. But this time, we're actually going to go ahead and do a self-closing tag because there's nothing that we need to put between an opening and closing ingredients tag. So we'll just do a self-closing one like this. You can see it's self-closing because it's got this slash and then an angle bracket at the end rather than just ending with a regular angle bracket just like this recipes one does. So essentially, that is equivalent to writing this and then this. So those things are essentially exactly the same thing. But to just shorten the XML a little bit, we just use the self-closing tag right there. Now the ingredient, of course, needs a name. And then between these quotes, we're gonna pick one of these ingredients. So let's go ahead and maybe cut the forged steel from here. So you can double click to highlight the lot, cut it, and we're gonna put it right here. And then we also need to add a count to this, right? So we need to say how many forged steel it actually needs. So then between these two, we could say, okay, let's just make it use, I don't know, two forged steel. That sounds, uh, that sounds reasonable. Now, what I'm gonna do is now that we've got one ingredient, I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste a few more. We have four ingredients in this recipe. So let's go ahead and copy them all down here. And then this resource forged steel, we can just change out for each of our other ones. So I'm gonna cut the duct tape one here and paste it under there. We'll do the same with oil. So just cut the oil and put it there. And then we'll do the, ne the next one with scrap brass. We'll just cut it there and we'll put it in there. Then all we gotta do is change the numbers. So how many duct tape do we think we'll need for, for making one of these? I'd probably just say one because duct tape again, you know, glue's not the easiest thing to get. So duct tape's not the easiest thing to make unless you loot a lot. Uh, oil as well, not super common unless you go mining for shale. So I'd say one. And then maybe for the scrap brass, we could say it takes five scrap brass to make this, uh, to make this work. I think what we're also going to do is going to put the metals first. So remember, if you go to the end of a row and hold down control and shift, I'm going to press the up arrow and you can see I can then reorder this thing up to here. So I think we'll start with steel and then brass and then we have duct tape and then we have oil just to kind of finish it off. Right. And that will go ahead and make a recipe for mechanical parts. So that seems like it's good. So why don't we go ahead and save this now? And then we're going to go ahead and load up the model up one more time. So we're going to go ahead and load up seven days. So go into Steam, start seven days, and then we're gonna go ahead and continue. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and press F1, you know, the F1 test. Guys, hashtag for this episode, hashtag the F1 test. If you got this far in the episode, leave me a comment and just give me that hashtag in the comments. So let's go ahead and make sure this loads up and it looks like everything's loaded. There's no yellow text, which is awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and continue game and then we're gonna open up our test world and just go straight into there. So let's go ahead and do that one. And we're going to just make sure that there's no yellow text that comes up here when it's saying it's loading these local XMLs here. So you can see it's loading up all the all the XMLs right here, uh, loading up the shapes. Actually tells you how many shapes load as well, which is kind of cool. And you can see that everything is fine so far. Doesn't appear to be any yellow text so far. So let's go ahead and make sure that this all loads in properly. And then the game should go ahead and start up with no issues. Now, there was a bit of yellow text up here, but that one is, again, just to do the animator and stuff like that. Um, so it seems that's just a vanilla bug and nothing to do with modding, which is awesome. So now let's go ahead and go into our recipes here and let's just type in electrical parts. And as you can see, those have been added still. Nothing's changed there. So how about mechanical parts? How do we do that? Well, here we go. As you can see, the mechanical parts are now in and you can see we've got forged steel, brass, duct tape and oil and everything seems to be working just fine. So as you can see, the mechanical parts have also now been added as well successfully. If we come back out of here now, I'm going to go into the config dump version of that recipes file. So remember the one we opened earlier. And if we open this now, it's going to say this file has been modified by another program. So essentially seven days has modified this. So we're going to go ahead and reload it. And then we're going to go ahead and head all the way to the bottom here. And you should see now that it says right here, element appended by my first modlet. And there you go. That second append tag has gone ahead and done that. So now we've got our new recipe in this thing that then loads when we load up the game.
Now, one thing that we have done, as you can see, and I did I did touch on this, we've used two separate append tags right here. So as you can see, I've added, I've done one append tag here, and that's fine, and I've closed it. Then I've opened another one, another append tag here, and that's fine, and I've closed it. However, every time you use one of these appends, it actually consumes a little bit more resources because essentially you're gonna have, you're essentially telling the game to append something and then move on and then you're saying oh append this other little bit and move on so essentially you're writing two instructions however we only need to write one append to do both of these so what you can do is to save a little bit of loading time and to make your model load a bit faster you can just go ahead and do this so you can see that i've now put my two recipes between these append tags instead of having two separate append tags per recipe i've just lumped all of these in so essentially now all we're doing is we're writing this xml in one append operation which essentially halves your mod's load time which is really really good so that is going to make sure that the mod goes ahead and loads a little bit quicker and this will go ahead and be equivalent now that we got into grips with adding a few of the recipes i'm going to go ahead and add a few more but this time i'm going to make some deliberate mistakes so that we can see how to diagnose when things go wrong so let's go ahead and we're actually going to set a new append tag right here and i know i said we can just do this in one but i want to demonstrate what can happen if we don't use a correct xpath first of all because this is uh this is one that, that will uh this is one that you'll probably run into often early on and i want to show you how to get around this so let's go ahead and start a new append tag and we're going to go ahead and remember close it and then we're going to go ahead and leave ourselves a bit of uh, a bit of room here and then we're going to type in xpath equals and then this time i'm just going to go ahead and type in i'm going to deliberately spell this wrong i'm going to put recipes but instead of the uh, es i'm just going to put an s on the end like this actually no i'm going to go ahead and capitalize this r here so we're going to go ahead and do that so you might think that just capitalizing this doesn't make a difference but trust me it will and you'll see you'll see why in a little while so we're going to go ahead and start adding a new recipe in here and this time we're going to do this recipe completely correctly but I'm going to go ahead and uh, in the next example, make a mistake with the recipe itself so you can see what's happening here. So first of all, let's go ahead and we're going to just copy this mechanical parts one that we added before. But this time we're going to go ahead and add a recipe for acid because, you know, acid is something that we can't really craft much. So let's go ahead and type in acid and see what we can find. So it's just called resource acid. So that can be the thing that we want to make the recipe for. So we're going to say recipe name equals resource acid. And the count, of course, is going to go ahead and just be one. Right. So let's go ahead and see what could we could use to go ahead and make acid. Well, it seems like maybe we need some water in there. Um, so let's just go and type in water. And let's see what we can find here. So you've got a bucket of river water. Let's see, we got a water filter. Let's see what else we got here. Um, some boiled water. That seems like it could be good. So let's go ahead and maybe use some boiled water right here. So we'll go ahead and take our boiled water. And that's going to be our first ingredient. So let's go and add that right here. And we'll say it just requires one of these boiled waters to work. Let's go and see what else we could do. Probably like animal fat and corn or something random like that would probably do it um, as a way to be like grain alcohol, which is probably quite acidic, I would assume. So let's go ahead and maybe do something like that. So let's just type in, let's just type in animal and see what comes up. There we go. Resource animal fat comes up right there, which is awesome. So we'll go ahead and grab that one. So we'll grab the animal fat here and we'll make that the second ingredient. Let's say it requires, let's say it requires three animal fat right here. And then for the last thing, let's maybe, yeah, just add some corn or something like that. Because that, that, I don't know if it makes like super amount of sense, but, you know, it's something we can do. So let's go ahead and look at corn. Here we go. Um, so there's food crop grace corn, which I believe is the super corn. And then there's also, I believe there should be one uh, just called food crop corn as well. There it is right there. So the regular corn is this one. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add one of those. And let's go ahead and do go ahead and replace that one and we're going to say it takes five five of these there you go so this takes five corn three animal fat and some boiled water and it's going to go ahead and make us some acid let's go ahead and do that so we're going to go ahead and remove the last ingredient because we don't need it and then we're going to go ahead and save this so now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go ahead and load up seven days and you're going to see that uh, something will actually go wrong this time so let's go ahead and load up the game and we're going to go ahead here and continue from our next world so let's just let this load up we'll continue from the next world as we did before and again 
put on F1, make sure that the mod loaded. It did, everything's fine. So now we'll go ahead and keep this console up so we can see what happens. So remember, we're looking out for yellow or red text that doesn't have anything to do with the animator. So we don't, we don't want to worry about the animator, but we're looking for any yellow or red text and see what happens here. So let's go ahead and let this, uh, let this do what it needs to do. And we should see, ah, I did see a bit of yellow text this time that's different from the other one. So if we let the game load completely, and we'll go ahead and sort that out. You'll see now there's there's the one to do with the animator state, which is fine. We're going to go ahead and pause the game now so that not too many more console commands come up. And then we can scroll back up. And you can see now that if we look up here, it says uh, XML patch for recipes to XML from mod. My first model it did not apply append xpath equals recipes. So you can see that it's talking about this one that we just did here. So it's saying that this thing here and anything between these append tags, it did not apply these. Now, the reason it didn't apply these is because the recipes tag right here. So if we go to recipes and go right to the top, the recipes tag does not have a capital R. Whereas in our XPath, we have written it with a capital R. So you do need to be very careful about the cases that you use. The same goes for the resources. So you'll see that in game now, um, the acid that we added for this recipe is still not craftable. So let's go ahead and start the game up and let's go ahead and type in acid. And as you can see, even though I did add that recipe within the pen tag, it didn't apply that change and therefore the recipe is not craftable. We can also go ahead and look in recipes XML here and go right to the very bottom here. And you can see even there, it's not gone ahead and applied anything. So it didn't do that one from the uh, from the acid either. So that is a problem that we need to go ahead and fix. Now, the easiest way to fix that is to essentially go ahead and of course, put this into lowercase. So we're gonna go ahead and put it into lowercase and we're gonna save it. Now, if you make any changes to your X paths and anything like that in XML, you do not need to exit the game completely. All we need to do is exit the game to the main menu and reload it. So we're gonna go ahead and reload test world right like this. And again, we'll open up the console, but this time you should see that everything has been fixed just fine. So we'll go ahead and let this load. And you see that this time, well, there is no yellow text and you'll see that things actually load faster on a subsequent reload. So you won't have to close the game down every single time. Now, there are a few instances where you will, especially if you're doing Harmony mods, but for, ma for mainly pure XML, you don't need to do that. So as you can see, this is now loaded and there was no yellow text this time. So if we now look in this file, we should see down here, there it is, the acid this time it did get loaded. Now, of course, we could apply this into one append tag like this, and that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off here, and then we're just gonna put all these under one append tag to save loading time, like that. There we go, we're gonna save this. Now, we don't have to worry about reopening or applying it, but this time, let's go ahead and go into here, and you can see there is now a bottle of acid right over there. Okay, let's go ahead and do another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep seven days loaded, and this time, I'm going to go ahead and make one change to our acid. This time, I'm going to go ahead and change the capitalization on resource animal fat like this. And you'll see uh, you'll see what happens here. So if I go ahead and do that, and we're going to save it. And now I'm going to go ahead and exit out and reload into the world again. You'll see that this time we get a different error. So let's go ahead and go into continue game. And we're going to go to test world, load it up one more time. And again, the F1 test, make sure everything runs. So we're going to press F1 and open up the console. And you'll see, ah, this time we actually went and uh, we actually went and got ourselves a bit of red text. So as you can see, now we got red text. Well, something is definitely off now. So I wonder what that could be. Let's go ahead and see. Well, obviously we know what it is because I pointed out the mistake, but I'm doing this so that I can show you guys that, you know, sometimes mistakes will creep in unexpectedly. But as you can see, you can say that it failed here. And it's saying that the object reference is not sent to an instance of an object. And it says no... It's a bit hard to read here because the red text is very hard to read on these kind of backgrounds. Uh, I wonder if I like look down at like a, I wonder if I look at like a dark area, we'll be able to see it a little bit better. Um, because yeah, the uh, the red text is always, uh, I always find the red text in the console very hard to read. So yeah, if we maybe come to this area, we should be able to read it a bit clearer. Um, but yeah, you can see it says uh, loading and passing recipes.xml failed. And it'll say no, uh, no item or block or material with the name 
resource animal fat existing. So it's essentially saying, yeah, this is uh, this is not existing and therefore they can't make the recipe with something that doesn't exist, right? And that's why it's failed. So of course, if you see that message, you then need to go ahead and check that thing that it mentioned. So you can see it's obviously this one doesn't exist. Even though it's spelled exactly the same, the capitalization does matter. So we're going to go ahead and change that back to regular resource animal fat. We'll save it and then we can come back out of here. And then if we try this one more time, we should see that everything loads fine. So we'll go ahead and continue game. And then we'll go ahead and load back into our world again. And this time, of course, we fixed that mistake. So everything should go ahead and load just fine here. So we'll go ahead and sort that out. And now, as you can see, no red text pops up. And then this time we should have our acid added as usual. So if we go back into this thing here, the thing has been altered a bit, but as you can see, everything is now looking correct over here. There is our acid. And now if we go into our menu here and we will check it, and you should see now that the bottle of acid has now gone ahead and been added right here. There we go. So we looks like we are actually having some water on here. So yeah, it's actually got some water already. But yeah, we still have to get some uh, animal fat and some corn in order to make it work. The last part of this tutorial, I want to talk about adding one more recipe, which is going to be a food recipe. And then we're going to very quickly cover how you can remove a recipe so that it's no longer craftable. Say if there's a vanilla recipe you don't want to be crafted, we're going to talk about how you can remove that from the game so the player can't craft it in their backpack or on any of their workbenches. First of all though, let's go ahead and look about adding a can of chicken. Sounds like a very simple one to add. So let's go into our recipes file and let's just type in, let's just type in chicken, see what happens here. And it seems like well, chicken does not appear in here. So it looks like the can of chicken is not actually used in any recipes at all. So how are we gonna find what it's called in the game? Well, that's actually very simple. We're gonna go back to our vanilla config file here. So remember, you can get it to your, you can get your seven day shortcut and then go into data config. And then we're actually gonna look in items.xml. Now you may also find names in blocks.xml, but essentially an item is something that you cannot place down in the world, whereas a block is. Now a can of chicken, of course you can't place that down in the world. You just kind of eat it and then it's gone or it stays in your inventory or in a chest. So it's gonna go ahead and go ahead and be in items. So let's go ahead and type chicken in here and see if we can find where it is. So let's go ahead and type in chicken. There we go. As you can see, the can of chicken is just called food can chicken so let's go ahead and copy that so we're going to copy this one here and we're going to add another recipe into our recipes here so we're going to say uh here we go so we're going to go recipe name equals and then we just paste this in food can chicken and this is going to make uh, just one of these guys right okay so we're going to close that tag here and it should just close on its own when you do the angle bracket and let's go ahead and consider the ingredients well since we don't have cans anymore in the game, like there are no there are no cans we can use, I guess we'll just have to use like a jar of water or something to start it with, because you know usually it's like the the, the chicken kind of gets like in, injected with water to plump it up, doesn't it? So we can start with this uh, drink jar boil water that we had before, and then let's just get, let's just say we want five raw meat to be in there. Can we find raw meat in the recipes or the items file? Let's just type in meat and see what comes up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it looks like it does actually show up here. As you can see in the meat stew, there's the raw meat that's right there. So we'll go ahead and grab that one. And let's go ahead. Actually, we could probably just copy this entire line right here, couldn't we? So we'll copy this entire line here. And we're going to go ahead and put this in here. So it's going to take five raw meat. And then because it's a chicken, you know, that's got feathers on it. So, you know, and because the apocalypse is kind of weird like that and you find weird stuff, you find like paint going into cans of sham. Let's just say that some feathers went into a can of chicken to make it a bit more convincing that it's actually chicken, right? So we'll go ahead and come into the recipes again. And I wonder if feathers is found in here. It probably is because they're used in arrows. So let's just type in feather. And as you can see, resource feather is right here. So we're going to go ahead and we'll just copy this line and we'll change the count here. So we'll go ingredient name equals resource feather. And we'll just say it just has like maybe maybe like two feathers will go into there as well. So yeah, just like kind of the the chicken wasn't kind of plucked properly. And there we go. This should now go ahead and add the chicken. Now I've got my seven days game left up here. So we'll just go ahead and exit out of here. And then we'll go ahead and continue. And we should hopefully find that the can of chicken has been added. So let's go ahead and do that and make sure everything's fine. OK, so again, the F1 test will make sure that's done. And there we go. It looks like I'm not getting any yellow text. So everything is fine. 
Because trust me, even after running for ages, I still get yellow text and red text. So, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of if it happens. It will happen. Trust me. <laughs> it will always happen. There's the animator one. That's fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and check now that we got the chicken in here. And uh, there we go. Uh, a chicken ration. There we go. So we got a chicken ration right here. And as you can see, it takes water, it takes raw meat, and it takes feathers. And there we go. The recipe has been added successfully. Let's go ahead and talk about removing some recipes. So let's go ahead and look at some recipes and see if there's anything that we want to be removed. For example, let's go ahead and say that we didn't want the player maybe to be able to craft a dew collector. Now, I know this might seem a little bit weird, but let's assume that we wanted to remove the dew collector recipe. How would we go ahead and do that? Well, let's go ahead and exit out of here. And we'll just go, actually, actually, I'll keep it on pause so it doesn't play music in the background. Let's go into our main recipes file and let's try and find the do collector. So let's just type in do and see what comes up in here. And there it is. It's CNT do collector. So what we can do is we can actually use a remove X path instead of an append X path. So what we want to do is in if we wanted to remove the recipe, all we'd literally do is we'd, we would go ahead and find this recipe right here and we just go ahead and delete it like that, right? We just go ahead and remove it and it will be gone. However, we can't just necessarily do that with an append X path. Because remember, append is adding something, but we can actually remove one by using a remove X path. So let's go ahead and make another comment down here. We're actually going to come outside of our append tag right here. And then we're going to say how to remove a recipe. And there we go. So or we should say recipes, shouldn't we? Because we're going to do we're going to do several examples so you can see how it works. So this time we want to go ahead and type remove. And then we've also got ahead and we're going to go and close it. But this one can also just be a self closing tag. So we don't need to go ahead and uh, I mean, you can do it like this as well if you want to. If you want to do it like that, that's absolutely fine. But the remove X path just requires a self closing tag. So we're going to go ahead and just do that. Now, we've also got to tell it what to remove, right? So we can go ahead and just do X path like this. So I'm going to head ahead and put in an X path and we're going to go ahead and tell it what we want to remove. So what we want it to do is we want to find the recipe whose name has a name attribute here of container do collector. That's the uh, so CNT is short for container. So essentially, we want to find a recipe that has a name attribute with the value of container do collector. Now, remember that the recipe falls under the recipes tag, right? So we have to start from the root. So first of all, we're going to start from the root of the document. And now the first thing that opens up in this recipes thing, if we go to our other one here, uh, if we go right to the top, the first thing we go into is recipes, right? So we're going to start with that one first. So we're going to start with recipes. And then we want to find all the individual recipe tags. So we're going to go into recipe. And then remember, in the last episode, we talked about doing a lookup, right? So we wanted it or a conditional lookup. We wanted to fulfill a condition. And to do that, we use these square brackets. So we want a condition on the recipe that it has, first of all, a name attribute, right? So let's go and do that first. So we're looking for an attribute. So remember, we type in the at symbol. So we're going to say, OK, we're looking for an attribute and we're looking for a name attribute, right? So that's so, so we're looking for any recipe that has a name attribute. Currently, every recipe has a name attribute, though, right? So, you know, this this one here has a name attribute, but then so does this one. So essentially, all it's going to do is it's going to remove everything. So we have to be specific on what the name attribute is. And it just so happens that the name attribute is this. So we're looking for a recipe that has a name attribute that is equal to. So we're going to have them type in equals. And then we're going to go ahead and put two single quotes here. And between that, we're going to go ahead and place down this like this. So we're going to go ahead and put in the name of this. So essentially now what it's going to do is the pointer, first of all, is going to go into the recipes. And it's going to say, OK, here's the recipes. And then it's going to say, now we want to go inside this recipes tag and look for all recipe tags. So then the pointer is going to be like, OK, well, here's the recipe tag. Here's this one. And then it's going to go. Here's this one right there. So first of all, it's going to have all of these in its selection. So every single recipe one, uh, oh, kind of close it down. Every single recipe one like this, it's going to currently be pointing to. But then we do a conditional lookup on it and say we want a name attribute. And currently, because every recipe has one, it's still going to pull out all of these. But then we also said that the name attribute has to be equal to this, right? So it has to be equal to container do collector. So what's going to happen is the point is going to go, OK, this recipe does have a name attribute, but is it container do collector? No, this one's container wood furniture. So ignore that one. Same with this one. It says it has a name attribute, 
but this one is called wood sign block variant helper so it's not that one so it's going to keep going down here and then it's going to go okay how about this one does this one have a name container do collector it's going to be like aha yeah it does and it's going to go okay and you told me to remove it so it's just going to go and it's just going to go ahead and remove that from the vanilla file so what we're going to do is we're actually going to save this now and then we're going to go ahead and reload the game and you'll see now that if we try and look for the do collector recipe it's going to be gone so let's go ahead and continue and then we're going to go re-sign back into the world here and you'll see that once we sign back in as long as of course i've made no mistakes so again f1 test always got to do it you know get into get into a habit of every time you load uh, seven days press f1 sometimes even if i'm just playing a regular game i do it by default now because it's just become habit so yeah get into a habit of it because it's good practice to do it anyway let's go ahead and load this up and as you can see there was no errors so now if i go ahead and type in do collector you can see it's no longer there the do collector has gone completely so if we look into our config dump file which is this gun this one right here i'm gonna go ahead and go yes into this now you'll see that if i go right to the bottom right here so if we go grab i want to remove that fine window a bit if we go right to the bottom you'll see right here that nothing's been added to the bottom here so we've obviously got our canned chicken one that we added before but it doesn't say about anything being removed however if we do a find on the do collector here you'll see now that all it does essentially is it comments out the do collector so essentially that recipe that was that is still there but it says element has been removed by my first modlet and it will show you what the x path is as well recipes whose recipe's name is container do collector like that so you can see now that this recipe was here um but it's just pretty much been gone now and yeah it's just been i think it's been commented out unless it's just actually completely removed it oh i actually think it has oh okay this is the empty jar that's been removed okay i thought it commented out but it doesn't it literally just goes ahead and deletes it from the xml file so yeah you'll see uh you'll see where it's been removed from so yeah if we were to go ahead and then remove that re remove this thing here and just get rid of that it would actually then re-add it back in here and it'd be craftable again so let's go ahead and talk about removing one more just so we can go ahead and uh, just so we can go ahead and summarize this a little bit easier so let's go ahead and find another recipe that we might want to go ahead and remove let's say that we don't want the player to be able to craft i don't know maybe we don't want them to craft i don't know maybe some metal furniture or something like that I don't know. Let's okay. Let's say let's say we don't want the player to be able to craft a cement mixer because we want them to have to have to buy it from the trader, right? So what we need to do, so going through stepping through the X path that we're gonna need. So we're gonna start with the remove, right? So we're gonna open a remove thing. So under this one we go remove. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a self-closing tag like that. And then we need to give this an X path, right? So as before, we start at the top, which is the recipes, right? So if we go right to the beginning, the root element is the recipes one, right? So we start from the root of the document. So we start from the root and we go into recipes as we did before. And then we want to look for every recipe. So we go slash recipe. So we're kind of navigating down. And this time we want the name attribute of that recipe to be the cement mixer one, right? So we're going to go ahead and probably just go ahead and put in cement mixer. I just copied that beforehand so we can get back to it. But yeah, we want to find the recipe whose name is cement mixer right so if we go ahead and then do this so we're looking for an attribute so we put the at sign in and we're looking for a name attribute and then we want to have that equal to its value is going to be equal to cement mixer just like that so now this will actually go ahead and remove the cement mixer as well so let's go ahead and come out of game one more time and then we're going to go back into the game and you'll see now that this has been removed so we'll go ahead and continue it one more time we'll go straight back in here and then we'll see that the cement mixer has now been completely gone. And now you'll be able to go ahead and add and remove more recipes at will, essentially. So you can do it with recipes. And uh, later on, I'll actually show you how you can do it with other things as well. For now, let's go ahead and come back in here. And you'll see now if we go into our crafting menu, if we type in cement mixer here, uh, you'll see that we can get cement. But the actual cement mixer is completely and utterly gone. Now, before we end off the episode, I do want to talk about something else you can do to make these remove things actually work a bit faster. Now, you remember that the less of these append things we used, the quicker our modlet loads. And the same is for these removes as well. Essentially, append and remove, as well as a few other things that we're going to get into in future episodes, are essentially code instructions that we're giving the game to do, right? So each of these, each of these operations here, remove, append, and there's a few others, are essentially an individual 
individual instruction that we have to do and if we kind of have if we kind of give it a lot of individual instructions the model it will take a long time to load so essentially we need to try and find a way to reduce the instructions as much as we can now as you can see in both of these remove examples this part right here up to essentially this bit here is exactly the same both of these x paths are the same so how can we specify in one x path we want to remove both this one and this one how can we specify that well what we could do is we can use a logical operator now don't get uh, don't get too confuddled by it essentially a logical operator is just something that you can say i want it to do it for this or this okay so there's a couple of other ones there's and there's a there's not and there's a few others but we're going to look at the or logical operator first so we're going to go ahead and do another remove tag and i'm going to just self close it here and we're going to get the x path that is similar so all of this part here is pretty much the same so we're going to copy that in and now we're going to go ahead and make sure that the quotes are closed and we got the square bracket closed as well you've always got to make sure your brackets are closed so First of all, we want to find the one whose name is container do collector. But then after this, you can go ahead and type in the word, give it a space and type the word or. And then we're going to go ahead and then copy this part right here. So we're going to go ahead and copy that to here. And we're going to put it just after that. So now it's going to say find every recipe that has a name attribute of container do collector or that has a name attribute of container cement mixer. So essentially we have condensed this X path down into one line. Now, this does have the advantage of loading faster than these two things here. So this one, this, this whole X path here will load faster than these two individually. However, if you do have an incorrect spelling of something, it will not give you an inclination as to what is the wrong one. So, for example, if I just had uh, if I just remove this N, for example, the X path would still evaluate to something and therefore we wouldn't get any yellow text at all. So sometimes this can be more prone to errors. So you have to be very, very certain that you've got everything right before you do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and remove. I'm actually going to cut these X paths here. Uh, and then I'm going to make a comment and say this is equivalent to this. And then underneath that, I'm just going to go ahead and put these in the comment like that. So essentially, these uh, this top one here that has both of these things is essentially equivalent to this. And we can say uh, the top one loads faster, but is also more prone to errors use at your own risk <laughs> but of course it's only it's only got a couple of these so it, there's nothing stopping you from just like having two or three recipes per operation which will reduce the amount of errors but still speed up the load time but if you feel more comfortable just using single examples like this you can also go ahead and do that so if we go ahead and load up the game one final time for this episode, we're going to go ahead and come out of here. We're going to go ahead and make sure this file is saved, which it is. Let's go ahead and continue again. And then we're going to load it one last time. And there we go. So yeah, we can actually make sure that both of these things did get removed, both in game and with the XML as well. So if we go to the F1 test, uh, let's go make sure we got no yellow text. It doesn't look like we got anything apart from the animator state, which is fine. Again, that doesn't really matter. And then we're going to go ahead and make our way into the world again. And now let's go ahead and check. So first of all, we remove the cement mixer. As you can see, that's gone. And how about the dew collector? And the dew collector is gone as well. We can also go ahead and check that in the other config dump file. So we're going to go into here and let's go and see now. So as you can see, the dew collector was here. But as you can see, it's actually updated the X path that we use. So you can see that the X path was this. It removes dew collector or cement mixer. So if we type in cement mixer now, we'll go ahead and see if that is uh, is removed as well. Um, as you can see, a lot of things use the cement mixer too, so it's a little bit more difficult. But there we go. You can see that the cement mixer has been removed by my first modelit. So that is the uh, the recipe whose name is cement mixer right here. So that has also been removed from this file as well.
Well guys, with that, you now have learned how to add new recipes into 7 days using current resources and items that already exist in the game, and you've also learned how to remove the recipes. In addition, you also now know how to error check and diagnose issues with your XPath or with the recipes or any of the resources that you've gone ahead and typed in as well. So hopefully now you'll be able to go ahead and start adding and removing recipes all on your own. But just to make sure you've learned it well, I have a challenge for you before we end off. The challenge I have for you, and we will go over this in a future episode, is see if you can add some recipes for some gun parts. For example, the pistol parts or the shotgun parts or something like that. That's, a, that's something I want you to go ahead and try yourself. You can come up with any recipe that you like um, for the ingredients, but it would be cool if you let me know in the comments your uh, X path and everything that you used to go ahead and add that recipe, as well as some example recipes with the ingredients as well. If you can let me know that in the comments, that would be awesome. If of course you did have any issues with this episode or understanding anything, please go ahead and let me know because I would love to explain things more if needed. But remember, you can also go ahead and find me on my Discord as well if you need any additional help with your modelers as well. Now, a little bit of a closing word on here. You probably noticed that all of these recipes have been crafted only in the backpack. And for some of these things, that might not really make that much sense, right? So for example, when it comes to, say, mechanical parts, they will probably be more crafted in the forge, and you probably wouldn't use duct tape and oil for those. You probably just craft those in the forge with melted materials. However, currently we're doing them in the backpack. The same with the can of chicken. That would probably be a campfire recipe, right? And the acid would probably be a chemistry station one, and the electrical parts would probably be done on the workbench. Well, in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and cover how to add workbench recipes as well, so you can have them on specific crafting stations. The other thing we're also going to cover is how you can go ahead and use passive effects to make your recipes work with certain perks. For example, the electrical parts recipe would work with the advanced engineering perk to make things cheaper as you leveled up that perk. Or maybe the can of chicken one would work with the master chef perk in order to make it so that as you increase level of master chef, it would use less ingredients. We want to try and make them compatible with vanilla as much as we can to make sure that they have the same mechanics from all the perks and skills that currently exist in the game. Next episode, I will be showing you how to do all that and more. But guys, for now, I think we're at a pretty good point to go ahead and end off the episode. So I do want to say, as before, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one and you learned a lot from it. And remember, if you need any help, feel free to get in touch with me. And if I can help you, I will. And if not, I'll try and point you in the direction of someone that does know what to do. But that's going to be all from me, guys. I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, bye!